Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. In this video, we are doing an openings video about the Catalan, which is a very topical opening at the moment and very popular in top play. In this game, Alpha Zero sacrifices two pawns in order to tie down Black's pieces on the Queen's side. Normally in the Catalan, you might expect White to play on the Queen's side, but in this game, Alpha Zero comes up with an, a good strategy to attack on the king side. Yeah, it's a really fantastic game and uh, and not that well known, actually. So, uh, um, well, hope you enjoy it. Let's dive into the game. So this is the game with Alpha Zero White and Stockfish playing black. And the game started with D2 to D4. Knight f6, c4, e6, and now um, g3. Um, yeah, I mean, probably Alpha Zero's favourite um, continuation in this position is to go knight f3 and then g3, uh, playing into the g3 Queen's Indian. Um, there are actually a lot of similarities um, with the Catalan, which is introduced with, uh, with g3. And actually, the line that we're going to have a look at uh, in this game could arise either from the 4g3 Queen's Indian or from the Catalan. Um, so Stockfish played this uh, this idea that's um, well very very common in in modern chess. Um, bishop b4 check, uh, bishop d2, bishop b7. It seems to waste a move, um, but in actual fact, this bishop would be probably happiest on the a1 h8 diagonal on b2, and so this move bishop b4 check sort of drags the bishop away from that diagonal. And when you consider that uh, that d2 isn't a, a great square for the bishop and that the bishop will later have to be moved probably to f4 or to g5, then actually this manoeuvre bishop b4 to e7 hasn't really lost a tempo because white will also have taken two moves to move his dark square bishop to um, to uh, to the position it, uh, it wants to. Um, so bishop g2, d5, knight f3 and c6. And as you can see, what um, um, what Stockfish is doing here is uh, uh, setting up um, um, a strong barrier um, on the a8 uh, h1 diagonal. You know, pawns on c6 and d5, supported by the pawn on e6 and bishop on b7. Um, and um, um, and these these pieces are actually this setup is uh, aimed to stop the um, the bishop on g2 from uh, from getting active. There is a drawback to this strategy, though, and that's that Black's pieces, Queenside pieces, are slower to develop. Uh, but Black's position is pretty solid, and it's normally solid enough to withstand this. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, um, um, White's a little bit ahead in development. Black's, Black's lagging behind, but yeah, this is such a solid structure. It's it's pretty hard for White to really to really get at Black. Um, Alpha Zero plays uh, something actually pretty interesting. Uh, plays uh, knight c3 and rook fd1 and um, what it's doing is uh, it's trying to get its opponent to accept not just one but two pawn sacrifices yeah i mean normally white uh, before playing knight c3 white plays a move like b2 to b3 just to uh, support the pawn on c4 um, and here black um, white's actually leaving uh, the pawn unprotected and this tempts black to play d take c4 um, winning the pawn, and of course, you know, b5 is going to come in, uh, protecting the pawn. So, uh, but alpha zero has got um, a, a very concrete follow up uh, in mind, and that's this move knight e5. Um, now, black can't protect the pawn on uh, c4 with a move like b5, because then there's knight takes b5. Um, so, white's actually threatening just to take this pawn back on c4. And of course, you know, if, if white just recaptures its pawn, then, um, uh, well, then black will start wondering, well, why did I play d takes c4 and uh, abandon my solid, uh, my solid wall in the center? So, um, the only consistent, uh, move for black here is to play queen takes d4. And after bishop f4, black's queen has only got one move, but a decent one. And that's this move, queen c5, keeping the pawn on c4 protected. This position has been seen before, but what alpha zero does here is a novelty. And it's a very sensible looking move. Alpha zero plays knight to e4. Exactly, knight to e4. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, knight a4 was played um, was played before, um, which is um, 
I mean, it's true. Knight A4 is trying to, um, really show that the, the, the queen on the, on C5 is very short of squares, you know, and, uh, um, but in actual fact, um, black is actually fine. Uh, black's queen isn't getting trapped. And one of the inconveniences of that line is that, um, um, the, the um, uh, there is stuff like this, and um, there's uh, the fact is that this knight can come into d5, and uh, that's rather annoying. It blocks the bishop on g2, attacks the bishop on f4. And this is always the crucial way, the crucial resource that black has in order to um, well to cover up the fact that his queen side isn't developed. So alpha zero's move, knight e4, is uh, sensible and typical. Uh, yeah, Alpha Zero often likes to do this plan of swapping off the opponent's most active pieces, and here it's swapping off the knight on f6. That's right. And after knight, knight e4, queen e4, you'll notice that because uh, the knight on f6 is no longer there defending d7, then the knight can't move to uh, to a6 because knight d7 would uh, just win the exchange. So this knight on b8 is uh, is tight to the protection of d7 at the moment. I mean, uh, there's also there's also um, you know another point to it that uh, the knight is also stopping the rook from coming to d7 at some stage. Um, but if the knight's tied to b8, then that also means that the rook on a8 is passive. And uh, we get the situation that we see quite a lot in um, Alpha Zero Stockfish games, in the Catalan or the uh, Queen's Indian, that um, the black somehow always has difficulties getting his uh, his rook on a8 and knight on b8 uh, developed. However, I mean, um, um, it's not all uh, roses for white. I mean... Um, his pieces are very strong at the moment, but of course, you know, this knight on e5, queen on e4, bishop on, f, bishop on f4 are vulnerable to being driven away by f6 or f5, um, and even g5 afterwards, you know. So, um, um, you know, white's got to, got, got to watch out for that and, uh, and make sure that, uh, yeah, that, that he manages to keep, uh, keep its activity. What Stockfish did was, was very interesting. I mean, it's a, it's a typical Stockfish, very specific defense. Um, that you couldn't uh, really recommend to a human, um, but you know, Stockfish manages to make these things work very often. Um, it went c3, <clears throat> uh, just ruining um, white's uh, pawn structure after b takes c3. And then this uh, interesting move, bishop a6. Um, Stockfish doesn't want to take, didn't want to take that pawn on c3 because then, well, the c file is open and the queen can come under fire. Um, bishop a6 is uh, looking at a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, it's attacking the pawn on e2. So if white, you know, offers to exchange off queens, for example, trying to get into a good ending, then the pawn on e2 might well be hanging. And secondly, um, after a move, whoops, terribly sorry, after a move like, um, for example, um, knight to d3, um, if ever this knight has to retreat, then black also gains this square c4 for the queen so that it can uh, um, exchange off queens. Um, the one thing about it, though, is that, um, uh, of course, you know, this move bishop a6 is not actually helping black's uh, queenside development. So there's still a, a long term problem there. But black is going to try and play f6 or f5, uh, maybe together with g5 or bishop f6, drive back this knight on e5 and the queen on e4. And then afterwards, develop the knight on d or to knight the knight to d seven. Um, I mean, this this is a a very typical you know engine uh, defense. I think you'd say because uh, for a human, a human would just feel very very worried that uh, oh, I'm not developing my queen side pieces. Am I ever going to get them out? But um, but yeah, I mean, engines can uh, can can play these sort of defenses uh, very very well. Now Alpha Zero plays a really amazing move. And it's not just amazing, it also wasn't found by the other engines. Yeah, so, um, I mean, whilst I was uh, annotating the game, I um, I just left uh, a couple of engines running, uh, just the top eight lines. Um, and I suppose, you know, I was writing about this position for maybe uh, five to ten minutes. And, um, well, it's in the, the move that, uh, that Alpha Zero uh, chose never even featured in those top eight lines. So it really is an incredible, uh, incredible concept. Um, the strange thing about this is that, you know, in the Catalan, um, it's all about this light squared bishop pointing towards the queen side and cutting across the um, uh, the black position. Uh, the Catalan's all about queen side pressure. Um, so, um, you know, Alpha Zero's move is, uh, is, uh, is quite, quite bizarre because uh, it's, um, um, it's actually all about king side pressure. 
Um, but what Alpha Zero is looking at, Alpha Zero is thinking Black wants to, um, my, my, the strength of my position is in this Queen E4, Knight E5, Bishop F4. And so what Alpha Zero wants to do, it wants to prevent Black from getting rid of these pieces. And the move it came up with um, was this move G4. So let's have a look at, uh, at, the, at the tactical points behind this because it's um, uh, it's pretty subtle. Um, the first thing is is that this move f5 from black, um, uh, driving away the queen from e4, now actually leads to a weakening of the black king side. Uh, this a2 g8 diagonal is weakened, and this leads to some interesting tactical points. For example, after queen a4, uh, queen c2 is also uh, uh, possible. Um, if black tries g5. And it looks as if um, White's severely embarrassed here because the uh, the bishop on f4 is protecting the knight on e5 and it's being knocked away. But um, the whole weakening of um, of Black's king's side that White's achieved with g4 now comes into play because we have this cunning move, bishop e3. And nice. um, yeah, if queen e5, then bishop d4 simply wins the queen. Um, so this is, uh, and otherwise, actually, if you know, if the queen moves uh, away or something, then queen e6 is absolutely killing. Just this, this black king side has been really weakened. Um, now the other obvious idea um, is to play uh, this move f6, um, and we'll see that in the game. Um, however, um, there is uh, a slight problem with this move f6 because uh, it weakens this pawn on e on e6, and actually, well, we'll see that in the continuation in the game after knight c6, this move queen takes e6 with check is uh, well the key to uh, to uh, to white success. So one thing I, I was looking at was to play this move king h8, um, with the idea of playing f6 or even f5, but without allowing a, any sort of checks along the uh, the a2 g8 diagonal. And uh, well, I spent quite a long time analysing this, and I thought I'd found a, a pretty interesting line. Um, and I was so thrilled when uh, I put it to Alpha Zero, and Alpha Zero actually wanted to play exactly the same line. So, uh, so there we are. Maybe I have actually learned uh, something from uh, from all those months of analysing Alpha Zero's games. Yeah, the move I wanted to play was this move G five. Um, clamping down on the uh, on the on the black king side, and after f6, we're going to take and take. Now the inclusion of this um, move g4 to g5, and then taking on f6, it's really weakened the um, uh, the black um, the black king. So um, it actually means that f takes c5 is actually not a threat. Um, but how is white to uh, to proceed? You know, how can White uh, increase uh, the strength of uh, of his position? Well, the move I wanted to play, and also Alpha Zero's move, actually, was this move King H1. And, yep, we've opened the G-file with G4, G5 takes F6. We're now going to put a rook on the G-file. I have honestly never seen an attack like this in the Catalan before. So um, if takes, takes Bishop F6. Um, I mean, to be honest, even the simple move Bishop D6 forks the queen on c5 and the rook on f8. Um, and I think that bishop takes f6 also uh, is very, very strong indeed. And that rook on f8 isn't defended because the knight's still on its home square. That exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, um, you see in all sorts of tactical lines that the fact that this knight and on b8 and rook on a8 are still at home, you know, that makes all the difference. Um, the one defence that, um, that I was... Uh, well, that I, I had the most problem breaking in actual fact was this move queen f2. And, uh, well, if I, I, I sort of felt that if I'd thought of this defence, then I've probably learned something from analysing Stockfish's games as well, because this is uh, exactly the type of thing that Stockfish does. Um, rook g1, um, and then this move queen e2. And Black's just uh, <clears throat> hoovering lots of pawns up. Um, and again, trying, you know, through another method um just to 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 move this queen uh, on e4 and knight on e5 and bishop f4 away from the uh, from the black king but now we've got um um a very nice sacrificial idea knight g6 takes queen takes um bishop d3 from black actually the only move to cover the h file um and now there's some uh, some there's a, a gorgeous little uh uh, mating idea. Rookie one, queen c4, 
Bishop e4, threatening mate on h7, rook f7, and now this move rook e3. I mean, just look at the power. Um, you wouldn't thought that you'd played g3 on move 3, you know, and just uh, teeing up for a nice uh, positional game aiming at the queen side. I mean, white sacrificed two pawns, you know, a piece as well, and he's charging down the g-file. And there's a big um, problem to all this for black, um, that after bishop f8, queen h4, you might think, finally, finally, the moment has come to develop my pieces. Um, but there's a big, big problem with that. Um, and in actual fact, if you, uh, if you've seen one of our previous videos on, um, uh, on, uh, on Alpha Zero's, uh, um, strategies, attacking strategies, you may recognize this position. Bishop takes h7, rook h7, and now what's the amazing continuation? It's all to do with the King being the black king being cut off on the G file and uh, having no pawn cover whatsoever on the H file. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's this one, Queen H seven. Actually, always one of my favourite uh, my favourite tricks. King H seven and the and, lawnmower and Rook H three exactly. The king can't go to the G file, and after Bishop H six, Rook takes H six is mate. And uh, I think if you gave this position to someone, they would not be able to guess it came from a Catalan. But that's Alpha Zero for you. I mean, just uh, um, any chance that it sees to um, uh, to make progress on the king side, it'll just go for it 100%. And I mean, that's what uh, what makes its play so impressive and also so powerful. Um, Stockfish decided to give up some material, in actual fact, to break the pressure. And it's probably a, a good decision. Um, played f6, knight takes c6, and now, well, knight takes c6, you just play queen e6 and then take on c6 with an extra pawn, you know, which is, uh, it's pretty good for, um, for, uh, for white, although, yeah, probably not winning yet. Um, but Stockfish had uh, another interesting idea, played this move queen c6. So the queen's protecting the pawn on e6, so, you know, does Alpha Zero have nothing better than taking on c6? Well, there's this move queen e3. And this move queen e3 actually fits together very closely with the fact that, that White has played g4. And I'll sort of show you why. Um, so the queen is um, is uh, attacked and the rook on a8 behind it. So black's going to lose the exchange. But it doesn't look so bad for black. After all, black's got a number of possibilities. But actually Alpha Zero is just... Um, uh, well, judge the tactics beautifully in this position. So the first thing that you might expect um, here from um, uh, from Stockfish is to play this move knight c6. Um, after all, after um, bishop takes c6, queen c6, um, this doesn't look too bad for black. I mean, black is the exchange down, but bishop b7 is coming with um you know threats of mate you know and uh, bishop c5 as well maybe e5 however um alpha zero wanted to keep its queen on e3 um in order to be able to meet this uh, uh this idea with bishop d6 and of course after bishop d6 then queen e6 check followed by queen takes d6 and um, a move like bishop b7 is no problem. We can now play f3 because we've blocked the access of the bishop to the c5 diagonal. And after here, we go again go queen e6 and then queen d6 with a completely winning position. So that's the first, you know, really beautiful tactical point. Black can't play knight c6. Now black played uh, the move e5, but this allows white two things. First of all, bishop d5 check intermediate. Uh, which means that the uh, that white is going to keep its two bishops. The bishop is going to be trapped in the corner. And secondly, you know, you notice that having played g3 to g4, the bishop on f4 now has a retreat square back to g3, which is, yeah, really very, very important and pretty cool. Um, and otherwise, if, you know, if, if white didn't have this resource, then maybe this, he'd have to play this queen not to e3, maybe to c2, you know, uh, somewhere further away from the king side, which would have given black a lot more possibilities. But here, keeping the queen on e3, um, we're going to see how uh, alpha zero makes use of this. Queen g6, and now queen e4. And this is fantastic technique. Um, alpha zero understands that, uh, the key thing is, 
swap off the queens after the queens are exchanged, even if black gets another extra pawn. Um, there's just a passive knight on b8, um, and white will have control of the open files. And well, you'll see how that uh, works out in practice. Bishop check, king h1, uh, stockfish took the pawn on e2, rook d2, and rook d1. And um, well, actually, um, alpha zero is simply aiming to go rook d8, swap off the rooks, and then afterwards, his remaining rook will have free entry. And yeah, I mean, look at that knight on b8. It still hasn't moved. So king g8, king g2, bishop f2, another nice move, just aim to swap off the bishops, and then rook d8, swapping off the rooks. And uh, um, the technical task, swapping off the bishops now, was not difficult because uh, white's just going to have a rook against knight. And even though black has got two pawns for the uh, for the rook, it's um, um, the position is just too difficult to hold. Of course, you know, uh, Stockfish does uh, does its best, but here in this position already, the knight's tied to d7 because the b6 pawn is uh, is attacked, um, and Black just ends just runs out of moves. Here, White's um, damaged the pawn structure, and now moving in with a king, and uh, there's no rush. Grab the pawns, Stockfish plays pawns to distract uh, white, but now the e3 pawn is hanging, and f5 is going, and then some more pawns will fall after that. So uh, Stockfish resigned in this position. I mean, I, I was, you know, I think this is a really, really impressive game. Um, really quite amazing. I mean, I think the, um, well, first of all, I mean, just understand that, um, you know, it's uh, Alpha Zero is making up this concept by itself. I mean, it's not following established theory. So it's come up with this concept by itself of sacrificing two pawns. And then this move, knight e4, I think is especially, uh, an especially fine move. And I think this is something we can really learn from, uh, from Alpha Zero. This whole idea of swap off the opponent's active pieces, leave him with passive pieces. And, uh, and that sort of, uh, compensation is, is, is worth two pawns in actual fact. Um, but I do have to say that, this move g4 is absolutely stunning. And, you know, as, as I said uh, before, it's not seen by any other engine, um, or not within any reasonable amount of time. Um, and, uh, you know, the variations that we saw with, uh, with a kingside attack, you know, from nowhere in actual fact, in a Catalan, you know, an opening that's directed against the queen side. That is, you know, something quite, uh, something quite special. And, um, I, I did really like the, the intricacy of these tactics and uh, the way it all hangs together and the fact that this move g4 allows a bishop to retreat back to g3 and so that allows white to keep the queen active on e3. You know, they're all little details, but these are the details that, um, you know, uh, turn a, a difficult conversion job into a very simple technical task. And actually Alpha Zero made it look absolutely effortless. And, um, well, you just see that, uh, you know, um, Alpha Zero's, uh, endgame is, uh, is really, you know, a very strong point in actual fact. Here it had no problem at all finishing, finishing off, uh, Stockfish. So that's another game where Alpha Zero sacks two pawns for long-term compensation and, you know, masses of variations involving peace sacrifices and pawn sacrifices and kingside attacks in the, uh, um, just in the sidelines. Um, I mean, hope you, hope you enjoyed it. Um, keep watching. We've got many, many more videos planned. And, uh, as Natasha always says, don't forget to subscribe. Yes, remember. And, uh, because, uh, yeah, it's always nice to see new subscribers to our channel. So keep, uh, keep, uh, checking and we'll post many more videos very, very shortly.